Okay, so we continue and let's see how we can work with object oriented PHP. So this will, I'm just going to cover basically every details about object oriented PHP. I do have a separate full list of videos about object oriented PHP and I will put the link in the video, in the video description or you can find the link in the top right corner of the screen. Okay, so I'm going to just explain the basics. So what is class, what is an instance, how we can create classes and instances and what are public private uh, properties and what is inheritance. Okay, these, these are the things what I'm going to explain right now. If you have any experience previously working with object-oriented programming, I think these things may be familiar for you and you can easily understand the steps. If not, just be careful and if, if necessary, just pause the video and experiment with the code what I'm writing. Okay. So, in general, class is a uh, blueprint, it's a template. You can also think uh, as a new data type, uh, which gives you a possibility uh, to define as many uh, variables from this data type as you want. And the variables defined from this data type are called instances. Okay? So, let's go and create one simple class and let's call it class person. Okay? And uh, let's give some properties to that person. For example, let's give public property name. Let's give another public property uh, age and another public property uh, salary, for example. Okay. And let's create, this is already a new data type. Okay. And we can create a variable out of this data type. And let's create P, which equals new and the person. Okay, and we give parentheses right here. Now P is an instance, person is a class. Person is a new data type, P is a variable of this data type. And uh, the P has name, age, and salary properties, and we can assign and print these properties, like P name equals Zura, P age equals 28, and P's uh, salary equals to null. Okay, we can fully print the whole P variable and have a look in the browser. And here it is. It tells that it's an object. It's, it has class person, so it's person classes object. And it has name Zura, age 28, and the salary is null. Okay. So we can also assign that uh, properties when we initialize, when we uh, initialize the instance of the class. Okay, so let's create a constructor. The constructor is a special type of function which is called when the instance of the class is created. Okay, whenever we call new person, uh, this function will be executed. And we can do like this we can give that uh, Zura 28 and null in that special type of function in that constructor. And we can accept that n, a, and s as an example. And we can set this name equals to n, this age equals to a, and this salary equals to s. Okay, what is this? This refers to the instance on which the constructor was called. Okay, whenever we call the constructor, it creates new object, and in this case, that p is the new object. And now this actually uh, is the p right now in this particular case. Okay, uh, best example is to give uh, the same names right here, the arguments of the constructor to have the same names as we have properties right here. For example, give it name, age and salary but uh, you can call it whatever you want okay so i generally name it as as my public properties are named just i showed you that we can have any any kind of name there okay so we have um we now we created the instance and at the same time we assigned that three values to that properties and if we print the person object we see the exact same thing we see name uh, Zura age 28 and the salary is null. 
Okay, since PHP 7.4, we have possibility to give the types of the variables. Okay, we can say that the name is string, age is integer, and salary is float. Okay, but here is one important thing. Okay, this will give us an uncode type error. That's because the salary must be float, and we are giving null right here. That's important thing to notice, okay? If you declare a variable string or integer or float, you cannot assign null to it unless you put question mark at the beginning of the data type. Okay, if I put question mark right here, which means that the float can be null, that's okay. And it prints uh, name Zura H28 and salary null. That's, I think, really good addition in PHP 7.4. Um, like the biggest edition uh, and I really like it but be careful again if you are not using PHP 7.4 you cannot use these uh, these features okay so let's move on and see uh, what uh, what is actually difference between public and private properties okay so I'm going to change this uh, salary for example into private property and right now we do we don't have any difference here but the fact is that I cannot access a salary property anymore outside of this class okay I can print here P's name I can print here P's age but I cannot print salary and we can see the error so it printed name, it printed age, but it doesn't, it didn't print uh, salary because that's private property, okay? And we cannot access private properties outside of the class. However, we can access private properties inside the class. And in order to access it, we can create a getter function for this, okay? I'm going to create public function get salary. And this will simply return this salary. Okay, here's the thing. I can access the salary inside the class. Basically, inside the class means from this curly brace until that one. Okay, and this salary can be accessed inside the class. And get salary, as far as it is a public function, I can now call get salary outside of the class. And this will give me null right here somewhere, which is not visible it's uh, right here it prints that salary which is now in the same way I can create a function to set the salary okay public function set salary okay I'm gonna accept salary right there and I'm gonna say uh, this salary equals to the salary okay cool so get salary returns null after this I can call on P set salary and give 100 and after this I can again call P get salary and that now should return 100 and here it is. So that's all about public and private properties that's the biggest difference. So now let's talk about inheritance. Actually I'm going to take this code and create separate file for this call it person.php and put this code right here and we can we know how to include one file into another so I'm gonna require once that person.php and this works in the same way now I'm going to show you uh, the example of inheritance okay so for this I'm going to create one more class call it student and that student let me clean up the code that student extends from person okay every student obviously is a person so I'm extending it from the person and that means that student will have all features all properties the person class has okay we just need to uh, require once right here the person okay and we have students and I'm gonna require once also student right here okay cool let me comment the code about the person and let's create and let's remove this and let's create an instance now of the student okay s equals new student 
Okay, this works in the same way as the person is working. So here's the thing. Uh, the person uh, in the constructor accepts three arguments, name, age, and salary. The student doesn't have its own uh, constructor function. So this means that person inherits constructor function, uh, excuse me, student inherits constructor function from the person, which means that when I create an instance of the student, I need to pass that, uh, that arguments, okay? So I'm gonna save this and see an error in the browser. Here we see too few arguments to function person construct. Okay, so the student is using person's constructor and it uh, accepts three arguments. We have two solutions right here. Either pass these arguments or go to the uh, student and override that construct function. And simply just we don't accept any argument right here. Just like this. We create an empty constructor because we want to create an empty student. Okay, I don't know why we should do this in production, but that's possible. And now, when I save this, um, I don't see anything. That's because uh, I don't output anything, and I don't also have error because uh, student's constructor doesn't request, doesn't require any arguments, and I also don't pass it. Okay, but that's not really common practice. Uh, in general, we should override the constructor and probably add some more arguments. Okay, so if we get back to this code, so we override the parents constructor, we get the name, age, and salary. Uh, these things are like common for probably all person, but the student may not have salary. He may have, for example, uh, student number, STID, for example. Okay, so in fact, we need to call uh, the parent constructor. We can pass their uh, name, age, and salary, but for salary, we can pass null, and we know that the salary is nullable. Student doesn't have salary at all, uh, but we want to save that STID. So additionally to those properties which belong to the person right here, we can add one more property, public STID, okay? And that can be integer, okay? And right here, I will call this STID equals to the STID, okay? The given student ID. And then I call the parent constructor. And this parent constructor will take the name, age, and salary and assign it to the student's name, age, and salary, okay? We are using this inside the person PHP, but this person PHP's constructor was called from student PHP's constructor. And student PHP's constructor was called because we created new student. And thus, this keyword used inside the person PHP's constructor is the S variable. Okay, so let's give here uh, Sura again. I'm a student. Uh, 28 uh, and I'm gonna give my student number right so that's one two three four okay and now I want to print the students name for example okay let's put their echo and here it is I see the students name okay so that's all about basics of the object-oriented programming uh, again uh, I encourage you to know more about this, to read more about this. I do have a full list of videos about object-oriented programming, uh, cover every details like uh, interfaces, abstract classes, protected properties, static properties, uh, and much, much more. So definitely check out the link in the video description or just have a look on my channel. Okay, so uh, let's move on and create uh, notes application with MySQL, okay? So let's understand how MySQL actually works and create some cool stuff there.